Hello friends, we are now with the third lecture on Anjana Apachana's Sharmaji for the 11th week of our course on literature and life. We will see the objectives, look at Anjana's life and works, read some passages from Sharmaji that is a short story we have taken for study. We will do some character analysis of the main character and a few others. Then understand theme, form, language and literary devices in the story. We will pay special attention to some Indianness in the story. This is a typical Indian story. So, we will try to understand where lies the typicality of this short story. Thereafter, we will move on to some aspects of human relationships and reflections on life from this story. Further, we will consider certain takeaways from the story and then finally summarize our presentation. Let us see the objectives now. The first objective is to know about the life and writings of Anjana Apachana, an Indian writer born in India, moved to the US, she falls under the category of diasporic writer. The second objective is to discuss Apachana's short story Sharmaji. It is a very well known story. The third objective is to understand the nature of office politics as presented in the short story. Remember our course deals with different aspects of life. One of them is office politics. The fourth objective is to learn to deal with the complex problem of uncooperative and difficult employees. In an organization, we will find different kinds of employees. How do we deal with different kinds of employees, particularly if they happen to be uncooperative and somewhat difficult to deal with? The last objective is to appreciate the emergence of women as leaders and problem solvers in organizations. Let us see the life of Anjana Apachana now. Anjana Apachana was born in 1972. I believe she is a living author. I found that it was difficult to collect more information about Anjana Apachana. I have collected some details which I share with you. She is basically a short story writer and a novelist. Comparatively, she is a low profile author in the sense she does not give interviews or she does not come into many scholarly writings. However, she is a winner of O. Henry Festival Prize. She is also known as a feminist writer. She has some connections with certain places like Gurg in Karnataka, Gwalior in Madhya Pradesh. She was educated at Delhi University, Jawaharlal Nehru University and Pennsylvania State University. She emigrated to the US in 1984. These are some details which I could collect. And also I found it difficult to collect some quotations from her. Here is one. One has to live inside the mind. It feels a loneliness and we solve several of our problems only in our head. So, there is something to do with the psychology of mind or living in the mind and so you will understand that there is more of interactions within the mind. So, when you read the story of Sharmaji, you will get into the head of Sharmaji and understand what happens in his head. Let us see some of the writings of Anjana Apachana. The two major works are Incantations and other stories. This is a short story collection. The second one is Listening Now which is a novel. The short story collection was published in the UK in 1991 and in the US in 1992. It was reprinted by Penguin India. It is a collection of 8 short stories. We have listed all the 8 stories here now. My Only Gods, Bahu, Sharmaji is a third story. The Prophecy, When Anklets, Tinkle, Incantations that is a titleless story of this collection, Sharmaji and the Diwali Sweets. If you have a copy of this book, please read Sharmaji and also Sharmaji and the Diwali Sweets together. You will appreciate the art of short story writing by Appachana much better. The last story in this collection is Her Mother. As we said earlier, Listening Now is a novel. It is a novel about the love story of Padma and Karan over a period of 16 years through the eyes of six women. So, again you can see some kind of efforts in presenting the picture of women in this novel. 
the second book listening now is very important for us to understand the concept of listening that uh, listening skill is focused in sharma ji story as well let's see the story of sharma ji now this is one of the most famous short stories of anjana apachana it is frequently anthologized it has been included in rushdi and ves anthology mirror work 50 years of indian writing 1947 to 1997 published in 1997 this story deals with office and gender politics trade unionism and empathetic humanism that's very important for us it also visualizes the new woman as a solver of problems created by patriarchy the companion piece sharma ji and the diwali sweets is also an interesting story which is good for you to read along with sharma ji after reading this story after understanding sharma ji i have written one sentence like this if we listen to each other we can help ourselves live better sharma ji learns to live better after being listened to by one miss das in this story who are the characters that we have in this short story of course sharma is the main character he is a clerk in the purchase department sharma's friend is jagdish gupta he is a clerk in the accounts department then we have mahesh who is a clerk in the personal department one more person we have mohan in the personal department miss das is again a key character in the story she is a personal officer she is presented as a modern woman a woman who solves problems in organizations we have one mr adesh singh he is a general secretary of the workers union in this office we also have a reference to a lady who is considered to be the supervisor for adesh singh then we have mr barwankar who is a manager for mr sharma again we have some characters like harish who is a peon in the purchase department and rahul who is a typist in the purchase department remember sharma works in the purchase department let's start reading some passages from this short story we are reading a few selected passages so that you will be motivated to read the entire story though this may look a little longer than many of the stories that we have discussed this is the opening of the story sharma was late for work when he signed his name in the attendance register the clerk in the personal department shook his head disapprovingly very bad very bad sharma ji he said clicking his tongue this is the 14th time you are late this month that means sharma is a regular late comer sharma's brow darkened you keep quiet mahesh he replied who are you to tell me i am late you are a clerk i am a clerk you don't have the authority to tell me anything understand he is very curt with mahesh mahesh retreated behind his desk he said what i am telling you i am telling you for your own good why you must take it in the wrong spirit i do not understand you don't tell me what is good for me sharma said he raised his voice i am 25 years older than you sharma is a senior clerk in this office sharma has a conflict with his manager so the manager asks sharma where have you been all morning here sir here where in the department sir you are not at your desk all morning sir what are you saying i must have gone down to the personal department or the accounts department for some work sharma was silent he shook his head he looked sadly at mr barwankar he said barwankar sahib why are you taking this tone with me you ask me questions as though you have no faith in me this is not a detective agency why must you interrogate me in this manner sharma asks his manager mr barwankar this goes on for a while and there is a discussion on how to solve this problem of mr sharma coming late or he is being absent at his desk how is this problem solved we have the presence of one miss das who is the personal officer so when the problem arises a reference is made to miss das by the manager mr barwankar 
So, Sharma ji wants to meet Miss Das, he goes in there. Come in Sharma ji, please sit down, says Miss Das. Sharma sighed and sat, he passed his hand over his brow, it is so hot, he said. How do you expect us to work with these parkets, Miss Das? What to do, Sharma ji? That is how life is in Delhi. Would you like a glass of cold water? Certainly, he gulped down the water. What advantages there are to being an officer? You have flask of cold water in your room. We poor workers have to go to the canteen to drink water. And when we go there and someone sees that we are not at uh, our workplace, we are accused of shirking work. He returned the glass. Thank you, ma'am. You are welcome. So, we can see through this conversation between Ms. Das and Sharmaji, the kind of differences between the officer and workers in this office. We also mention that Ms. Das is the new woman. Here is a description of her. How is Ms. Das a new woman? Ma'am, forgive me for saying this, but this is very bad, very, very bad. You did not tell any of us. You did not distribute any sweets. I am greatly offended. This is a cause for celebration, not secrecy. That is, Ms. Das has married already and uh, Sharma did not know, many others in the office did not know. So, he is a little upset. Ms. Das replies, it was no secret, Sharma ji. Oh, well, he surveyed her. You do not even look married. No Sindur, no Mangal Sutra, no jewelry. What is this, ma'am? No need for all that, Sharma ji replies Ms. Das. Sharma shook his head in despair. What can I say? I suppose things are changing. I would like to meet your husband, ma'am. Is he also good and kind like you? She looked confused. You will certainly meet him one day. Good, very good. Well, ma'am, I will go. From my side, please say namaste to your husband, says Sharma ji. So, when there is a marriage between a woman and a man, particularly one who is working in the office, is expected to inform other colleagues. But here, Ms. Das has not informed anybody. So, this gives rise to a kind of confusion and that is clarified now during the conversation between Sharmaji and Ms. Das. Because of the conversation that Sharmaji has with Ms. Das, he is able to build some rapport with her. With great dignity, he sailed out of the room. A minute later, he returned. Ma'am, he said with a slight shrug, I was wondering you would not be interested in reading some of my poetry, would you? I would very much like to. Sharma smiled. He nodded. I will get them tomorrow, ma'am. I wrote these poems many, many years ago. Since then, I have written nothing, nothing at all. Still, they are very philosophical, very deep, very complete. Tomorrow at 9 a.m., I shall share them with you. But Miss Das replies, in the lunch break, she does not want to use the office time for reading poetry. Sharmaji capitulated, if you insist, then the lunch break. That is how Miss Das is able to make Sharma understand the nature of work, office and personal work and one should be able to differentiate between personal work and professional work. The whole story, as we said, deals with the office politics and gender politics, office politics because of the conflicts between Sharma and many others in the office, gender conflict because of Ms. Das and her relationship with all the men in the office. We understand many things of office life through the eyes of Sharma ji. So, we have some analysis of his character. Sharma ji is basically a clerk in the purchase department. He has been working in this office over 25 years. Once at the beginning of his life, he was an award winning employee. He was also an amateur poet, but in course of time, he has been neglected and ignored by the management. After his marriage, he has three daughters and he wants to have a male child because of this Indian patriarchy. Yeah, family is complete only when the family has a male child. So, he longs for one. He wants to have a male child as soon as possible. Sharma ji is presented in the story as a good friend of Jagdish Gupta, 
a clerk in the accounts department. We see Jagdish and Sharma together in the canteen and in some other places. Sharma is a frequenter to the canteen for tea, cigarettes, to the daba for puri alu and lassi and to panwala for pan. That means, he goes around different places. He usually comes late to office and also he loiters in the corridors. He spends more time outside his office than in his own office. Let us see some more details about Sharmaji now. In the story, we understand that Sharma's wife is away from his home and so he uh, does not shave his face, he does not bring lunch to his uh, office. That is why he often goes to the canteen. Because of the neglect by the management, he has become a troublesome and quarrelsome employee now. One of the reasons for his late coming is some kind of depression in his office and also in his family. After some time, he develops some kind of negative attitude to company, especially to the managers in the office. He also cracks jokes, but you will see that they are cynically humorous. In one context, he explores the myth of hard work. In his young age, he believed in hard work, but after some time, he finds that hard work is not rewarded. Because he comes late, he gets into trouble with the manager and then we find that Adesh Singh, the trade union worker and Ms. Das, the personal manager somehow try to help Sharma to overcome the crisis arising from the charge sheet given by Mr. Barwankar, the manager of Sharmaji. We have many characters in this story, we have already listed them. Just to recall the other characters who come into the story, we can just read these names. Jagdish Gupta is a good friend of Sharma and a clerk in the accounts department. He usually goes along with Sharma to the canteen and also this Daba and Panwala. We have uh, a character called Mahesh who is a clerk in the personal department who often tries to advise Sharma, but he does not accept it because Mahesh is much junior to Sharma. We also have one Mohan, a peon in the personal department. The most important character other than Sharma is Miss Das. She is the personal officer. She is presented as a modern woman. She has a different approach to the problems of the office than what Mr. Borwankar adopts. We see Adesh Singh, the general secretary of the workers union. We also have a supervisor for Mr. Adesh. There also we can see some kind of conflict between the two. The main conflict in the story is between Sharma and Mr. Barwankar, the manager of Sharmaji. We see that Harish comes now and then to tell Sharma, your manager wants you to come, please go to your office, but then Sharma does not listen. We also have Rahul in the same department of Sharmaji. What is the thematic contrast that we have in this story? We have some questions to present the thematic contrast. What happens to a clerk when he does not have any promotion for 25 years? This is a problem that you can see in many offices. The employee expects promotion after some time, but then he or she is frustrated because the management does not consider the feelings of the employee. What behavior problems can occur in such a clerk? Naturally, the employee would become indifferent and also the employee would become selfish. He would do or she would do things only for his or her own selfish interest. Next, how do male managers deal with union problems? We have a contrast between two approaches to problem solving, one by male managers, another by female managers. Charge sheet or memo is given by Mr. Borwankar to Sharmaji, whereas in contrast, we have the woman manager, Ms. Das, inviting Sharmaji to her office, speaking to him, giving water, switching on the fan for him, making him feel comfortable and then listening to him for all the difficulties that he might have gone through 
and the whole crux of the solution lies in listening to the employee. She listens at the same time she is a little firm you must not come late that she makes it very clear and also she appreciates his poetry. It is not that a human being is only a worker the worker has some emotional feelings in the form of poetry or some other problems at home like Sharmaji's children having some fever or headache and things like that. So, speaking and listening can help to solve problems. Ignoring will not solve the problem, but understanding will that is why we have given these two as contrast. Let us see the form of the story now. It is a rather long story of 24 pages. Most of the stories that we have in our course are really short whereas, this story is rather long. The story deals with a short duration of one day from 9 am to 5 pm in that sense this story has unity of time. Though it is a long story it is focused primarily on Sharmaji. So, the story focuses on a single character Sharmaji who is a recognizable type character with a chance to grow. If more chances are given probably he would grow and become a better employee. The story is set in an identifiable office or factory realistically. When we see that Adesh is working in a lathe or something like a factory we can understand it. This story also portrays a character and also a context. The character is indistinguishable from the context in which he works. The whole story is narrated by an omniscient narrator that means a third person perspective. Further we find that the story is developed largely through dialogues, short dialogues between characters. The story actually probes into the mind of a lazy and uh, manipulative clerk that is Sharmaji in relation to other characters, situations and the society as a whole. Remember the character is not separate from the society or the situation or other characters. Let us see the language of the story now. This is a realistic portrayal of an office in Delhi, something like a factory context we have. The whole story is presented to us mostly in the form of dialogues. Certain words used by characters differentiate one character from another character. We have as a result of the dialogues more of conversational language, short words, phrases and sentences are what we have in this story. The diction is expressive, we have some examples here. Sharma chuckled, everyone roared with laughter, Mahesh smirked, he sauntered out of the room. Sharma sighed, Sharma grinned self-consciously, Sharma chewed his lips, Gupta whispered, groaned Gupta, muttered Sharma, Sharma simmered, Sharma wagged an admonishing finger at her, he frowned, he capitulated. So, you can see different kinds of verbs which have been used to add to the expressiveness of the characters like Gupta and Sharmaji. We also have ample use of Indian expressions in this story. Two of the examples are are, yar. These two words are mixed with English words during the conversations between characters. Let us see the literary aspects of this story now. Predominantly, we find irony, wit and humor in this story. So, we find that Sharmaji is once an award winning employee, but now he has become a nuisance to the company by coming late not doing his work properly. We have a passage from the story now. He can keep saying that said Sharma contemptuously. Does he think we are animals? They all think we have no feelings, work all day, work when the electricity goes off, work without increments, work without promotions, work, work, work. That is all they care about, no concern for us as human beings. This is the voice of the neglected ignored employee. Managers, owners of factories and offices like this they have to be aware of the feelings of the employees. Sharma does no work, but claims he does work all the time. Through the story we can understand he does not do much work, but he claims that he is doing his work. In fact, he prevents other characters like Jagdish 
also from doing their work. Jagdish is one obvious case, another Adesh Singh. Actually, when Barwankar gives a memo to Sharma ji, Sharma goes to Adesh Singh and brings him here to Barwankar to talk to him. That means he is preventing others from their work. Let us see the Indianness in the story. This is a typical Indian story. There is an Indian company or an office, all the characters are Indian characters. These characters, particularly Sharma, reflects on certain Indian beliefs like karma and rebirth. We also have certain attitudes about Indian patriarchal sensibilities like having a male child in the house. We can also see the transition in society from male managers to female managers. Male managers adopt a patriarchal attitude or an autocratic attitude whereas, women managers adopt a sympathetic attitude to workers to solve their problems. We also have some kind of gossip about women, particularly about Ms. Das. The workers in the office talk about her in so many ways because she does not tell others that she has married somebody and uh, she has her husband and lives with him. We also come to know about the corruption that prevails in our country in offices in different ways, not only money, commissions and things like that. There are many other ways of corruption that are represented in the story. After reading the story, you will understand that a country reveals itself through its literature. Therefore, if you want to understand a country and her people, you must read her literature. To understand India, one must read Indian literature in English or in any other language or translated into English or in any other language for that matter. So, this story is a realistic story which tells us so many details about the Indian office context. Now, let us move on to human relationships. We have a family first of all, Sharmaji and his wife, he has three daughters and we also have Ms. Das and her husband. We notice that Sharmaji is able to have a good friendship with Jagdish Gupta. When Jagdish comes to know that Sharmaji has not brought his lunch, Jagdish says, I could have brought some lunch for you, do not feel bad tell me, I will bring some lunch for you. We see some relationships in the office context between manager and the employees. We also have the presence of the union. Adesh uh, Singh is the trade union secretary and he influences, controls many kinds of characters. We can also understand certain cultural factors, particularly Diwali, which you will understand more in the companion story of Sharmaji. Diwali means sweets and bonuses for employees. If you read Sharmaji and the Diwali sweets, you will understand that if you do not give sweets to employees, they can do some nuisance, they can stop the work in their office. What matters finally is humanity. Human beings have a sense of humanity. If that is allowed to grow, then everyone can be happy with their life. So, what we need to understand is we have to invest in humanity to ensure productivity in all walks of life including offices or factories. Let us see some aspects of reflections on life. There are three points which we want to focus for the topic reflections on life in this story. First is kind listening. We have a passage, Sharma ji sighed, yes that is what they all say, well you have been kind ma'am you have patiently listened to me. Ma'am, do you like cosmetics, lipsticks? Now, you see after Miss Das listens to the problems of Sharmaji, even though she is not able to solve the problems as Sharmaji would like to have, just listening has made Sharmaji feel a better human being. You have been very kind to me ma'am. You have patiently listened to me ma'am. He feels so happy. Then, the second point that we have to understand about this story is our life is brief. All literature, all religion, all science, every piece of wisdom that we have in this world tells us our life is very brief. So, we have another passage to 
tell us about this brief life. Sharma shrugged his shoulders modestly. There were things to do, many things to do and there is still so much to be done. Rahul, life is very brief, very fleeting. Life is very brief, very fleeting. In this temporary life, why should we quarrel with each other and cause so much of misery to each other? The third point that we have for this topic is hard work and along with this, honesty also comes in. So, we say hard work and honesty are two engines of idealism in our life. If we lose faith in them, our life becomes meaningless. Where will we find meaning in our life if we do not have faith in hard work and honesty, integrity, such great ideals? It is up to us to believe in them or not to believe in them. If we believe, we have faith. If we have faith, we have meaning. If we do not have faith, then there is no meaning. If there is no meaning, what are we left with? We are left with only misery. Do we want that? Certainly not. Let us see the takeaways now. If someone notices your problems, they are solved instantly. This noticing, observing is all that matters. If you help people in distress, they de-stress all others around them. If you contribute to the stress of one person, that person will add stress to all other people nearby. If you listen well, you will live well. This we have been saying with reference to different texts that we have studied, especially the boy who broke the bank. If you read, write and listen to poetry, you will have some sense of life. It is not that biological life alone matters. We have some emotional life that is much more important for us as human beings. If you listen to people, you can change their lives for the better. Like Ms. Das who listened to Sharmaji and changed his attitude to life, to the company, to women, to others in general. If we listen to people, we can change the lives of people, particularly for the better. The whole world will become a better place if we have people who listen to each other. There will be no war, there will be no conflict between people and countries if we listen to each other and understand our problems. If there is a problem, we have to listen to it and solve the problem. If you do not listen, if you do not solve the problem, then more and more conflicts, more and more difficulties, not only for human beings, all things around us will suffer. The entire environment will be destroyed as it happens in the case of Russia-Ukraine conflict now. Let us summarize the presentation we have had on Anjana Apachana's Sharma Ji. We saw the objectives, looked into the life of Anjana Apachana. We also looked at two of her writings, incantations and other stories and listening now. We read a few passages from the well-known story Sharma Ji. We analyzed his character in relation to other characters. We saw the theme, form, language and literary devices in this short story. We also looked into the typical Indianness in this story as it is set in India, in Delhi, in a recognizable location. We also saw the human relationships and reflections on life. Remember, kind listening, brief life and hard work and honesty. Then we looked at certain takeaways. We again focused on listening. If we listen to each other well, we can understand each other better and that can help us to live our life better. We have some references for you about the short story of Anjana Apachana. You can read some other references which may be available to you and help you understand the story and Anjana Apachana better. Thank you.